Hi guys, welcome to Ask Games, the show where you can ask me questions about your recently purchased new or used car. In today's show, we're going to talk about the different traction control systems available in your 4Runner. Now, today we will be using a 2019 TRD Off-Road to get the full spectrum of controls, but a lot of these things are found even in the base SR5, and although slightly different, we'll have the same uh, concepts and theories behind them and how you use them. So uh, today I plan on going over the lo location of controls, how to use them, and the progression that you will go through using them when you, uh, when you come across more demanding off-road conditions. So to start, I'll show you where all the controls are located and what they're called. In the TRD Off-Road and the TRD Pro, your uh, transfer case selector is actually going to be a manual shifter. So as you can see, you're marked with H2, which is high, two-wheel drive, H4, high, four-wheel drive, neutral, and L4, low, four-wheel drive. Near the roof, you're going to see we have a track, which is active traction control. A little uh, thingy here with some uh, tires and a little X. This is actually your rear locker control. Traction control, traction control is right here. Then you have the selectors for your crawl control and multi-terrain selection. I'll be going over all of these and how to use them. So, the first thing you're going to need to know is uh, you're going to drive in two-wheel drive for most of your driving. Anytime you're on pavement, uh, even wet roads, you're going to want to be in two-wheel drive. And that's because if you put it in four-wheel drive for just your daily driving uh, conditions, you're going to cause premature wearing of your tires and binding in the transfer case, which can cause a little bit of wear. So it's something that you're not going to want to do regularly. When you're driving down the road and you find, okay, now I'm in snow and I need more traction, that's when you would start uh, to want to use four-wheel drive. Or if you know you're going down, uh, you know, some pretty heavy dirt roads or you're starting to get on trails and you know you're going to need your four-wheel drive and you're off-road, then you can choose the four-wheel drive selection. And this is how you do it. So with the manual controller like we have here in the TRD off-road, uh, you can switch from H2 to H4 while you are driving. You have to be going 50 miles per hour or less, and you just reach down and give it a good pull into four wheel drive. When you do that, you'll notice that on the dash panel here, you have this little green light right here, and that is your indicator that you are in four wheel drive. Uh, now, if it is flashing, that means it may not have engaged. Sometimes you have to put it in drive and drive a little ways, and then it will go solid. You could do that in drive, reverse. Um, if it still doesn't go into four-wheel drive, you may just need to stop the vehicle or uh, turn it back to two-wheel drive and then back into four-wheel drive. That will happen more often if you have the electronic transfer case. Uh, it doesn't happen very often with the manual four-wheel drive uh, like we have here. Uh, if you do have the electronic transfer case, then you can switch from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive up to 62 miles an hour. If you're going faster than that, it's just simply not going to go into four-wheel drive. The green light that I showed you on the dash will sit there and flash. Okay, so let's say we're driving down our off-road trails and we realize that, okay, it's getting a little bit rougher. I'm having a little bit more trouble going through, uh, you know, some of these obstacles. What do I do now? Do I push the a track button whatever that does do I try to put on the rear locker well the next progression that you're going to do is putting it into four wheel low the way you do that is first you have to put the transmission in neutral you have to be at a stop and then you put it into four wheel low with either the manual or the the electric selector um, with the manual one whether you're doing it in four low or four high one thing I will point out you don't want to shift it slowly you really just wanted to give it a good solid motion and put it into into gear quickly otherwise you could experience some grinding uh, that's probably one of the biggest complaints that I've had customers tell me about is hey when I put it in four-wheel drive it kind of grinds 
Well, if that happens to you, it's completely normal. You're babying it. Just give it a good solid motion and put it in there quickly. So I'll show you now how to put it into four wheel low. Okay, so the first step, if you remember, is to put it into neutral. And now we are in neutral. Then you're going to take it from the four high, move it over and all the way down. And that's going to be four low. Notice when you put it in four low, you'll see that traction control is off and stability control is off and it says four low on the gauge there. When you are running in four low, this is going to be four low speeds only. You know, think probably no more than, than 20 or 25 miles an hour. If you need to go faster than that, it probably should be in a high gear anyway. This is going to be the next step if you find that four wheel high is not good enough for you. Uh, it's also very helpful if you're, you know, maybe climbing some steep hills or trying to crawl over some, some logs or rocks, things like that, because it gives you a little bit extra torque to the ground and you will notice it is a lot different driving with it in four low. So now we put it in four low, we still don't have enough traction to, you know, get through the kind of obstacle that we have coming up. What do we do next? At this point, um, I would probably go to my rear locker next. And what that does, if you're unfamiliar with the rear locker, it just locks the, the open differential so that you're sending 50-50 power. You have a 50-50 power split on your rear end. That's really good if you're you know crawling over some, some crazy stuff and you end up with one tire in the air or if you just have one back tire that's sitting there spinning and your other back tire is just not moving at all. Try out your rear locker. Now the benefit of the rear locker is you can use it for an extended amount of time. So if you're going to be doing a lot of you know, off, off-roading a lot of really heavy stuff, uh, and you're probably going to be doing it for 30 minutes, hour, two hours, whatever. You can have your rear, your rear locker locked uh, for long periods of time without having any trouble. So this is how you activate the rear locker. Very simple. So the first thing you do is make sure you are in four wheel low. You cannot use the rear locker in four high or two wheel drive, but it's just simply touching the rear locker. And then you take a look at the dash panel. You see that red symbol is sitting there flashing. Now that means we've activated the rear locker, but it has not engaged. Uh, all you have to do for that is simply put it in gear and roll it a little bit. That usually makes it go. So it didn't do it in reverse. Let's try drive. I'm gonna, go, oh, and there it goes. It just clicked in. So you can see now that it's solid, we do have the rear locker activated and notice ABS turned off on the left side there as well. So with our rear locker, we no longer have the ABS activated. Okay, now if we find that we still don't have enough traction, uh, we may have one tire that's just spinning and spinning and not sending any power to the, the other tire on the front. The next step that we can do is try to activate the active traction control system. Now the cool thing about active traction control is it's going to use the brakes to modulate any tire that's spinning to try to send that power to the other side. So what I would first try to do is use it independently from the rear locker. So I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to turn the rear locker off and then just push the button for a track and I'll show you what comes up on the panel there. So the red light for the rear locker is off. The A-Track light is on, and of course we still have uh, four low, and you know the other four-wheel drive lights on. Now this is probably one of the ways to get the most traction, and the cool thing about A-Track is it's even in the base SR5, so you get active traction control with every forerunner uh, now. It wasn't always like that, and I'm not sure the exact year that they started that Toyota started using A-Track in the forerunner, um, but that is. Uh, how it works now the current years you know at least from 2015 that I know of with the a track engaged like this since it is using the brakes to modulate one thing that you may experience if you're doing this for an extended amount of time is the brakes can overheat if the brakes do overheat then a track will automatically be turned off and you will lose that capability which is why I say if you're going to be doing a lot of continuous heavy off-roading it may be better to try and use the rear locker and see if that helps us out Another thing that you will want to know is you can use a track and the rear locker at the same time. 
Now the only catch, the downfall of this is uh, A-Track will be automatically deactivated if you exceed four miles per hour. So that's why it doesn't really help to have both of them on at the same time. Uh, try to use your rear locker. That doesn't work. Try to use A-Track. That doesn't work. You can still use them both at the same time, but you just can't exceed four miles per hour doing that. Um, only downside to that. If A-Track doesn't work, if the rear locker doesn't work, if, you're, if you find you still need more traction, or let's just face it, you get stuck, what can you do then? Well, now we're going to talk about a feature that comes exclusively on the TRD Off-Road and the TRD Pro, and that is called Crawl Control. Now, Crawl Control lets you set a speed uh, between uh, low and high. I think there's five settings or so. Uh, and according to that speed, you can either get yourself unstuck out of things, you can use it for climbing hills. The cool thing is you don't use the brake, you don't have to use the gas. You just kind of steer it, point it in the direction you want to go. So first off, you have to be in four low to use crawl control, and we are already in four low. So I'll show you the controls and exactly how to do it. Okay, so the crawl control is right here. First thing you're going to do is just turn it on. And then you're going to select your speed. If you are using crawl control to help control your speed downhill, which you can do, you'll want to turn it on the lower speed. If you're using crawl control to try to climb a very tricky hill, then you're going to want to put it on high speed. Uh, and then I'll show you what it looks like on the dash panel once we start using it. Another thing about the crawl control is while you're driving it, you're going to hear some clanking and some clicks and some bangs. It's going to sound terrible. It's going to sound like you just broke your brand new Toyota, but that's just the traction control, the anti-lock brakes, you know, coming in and out and doing their thing to give you traction to the specific tire that needs traction to continue on. I'm going to demonstrate that for you. For that, I'm going to put it on the low speed, and now all I have to do is put it in gear and take my foot off the brake, and I will let you hear exactly what that sounds like. Okay, so we have it in drive. I have the crawl control turned on, and you can see by the flashing light there that it is on. I'm going to let my foot off the brakes, and then you will start hearing the, the sounds that it makes. Okay, so that is completely normal. And what that is, is the brakes activating to try to keep this forerunner at a very slow speed. I'm gonna turn it up all the way to the highest setting. And now you will hear that, you know, it's a lot smoother, you're not getting that. Turn the steering wheel a little bit. And my foot is not on the gas, not on the brake. I'll show you, I can even give it gas and I can speed up while uh, keeping it in crawl control. If you hit, uh, I think 15 miles per hour, it's going to automatically, uh, or it's going to temporarily deactivate crawl control. But you can help control the speed. If you find in crawl control, you're not getting quite the speed that you need. So it's okay to give it a little bit of gas. Uh, as opposed to giving it the brake, I would recommend just turning it, turning the speed down on the dial. And now I will turn crawl control off. Okay, and the last thing we're going to talk about today is the multi-terrain selection. Uh, now, you cannot use multi-terrain selection along with crawl control if you activate the crawl control with your multi-terrain selection on. Multi-terrain selection is going to be deactivated. And what multi-terrain selection does is it lets you choose between different driving conditions such as um, snow, loose loose rock, dirt, a mogul, rocks, uh, and I'll, I'll go through all of those and show you what that looks like on the dash panel as you're selecting it. Um, if you're using those, you can't use crawl control at the same time. Okay, so this is your multi-terrain selection control. In order to use the very first setting, you can be in four-wheel high. So I'm going to do that right now to show you what that looks like. Remember, I gotta be in neutral to come out of four-wheel high. I'm gonna put it, or sorry, to come out of four-wheel low, I'm gonna put it in four-wheel high right there. I'm gonna reach up and I'm going to push the button to turn it on. And as you can see, it is in the first, first section, which is for mud, sand, and dirt. 
And what that's going to do is it's going to adjust the throttle so that if we are driving in mud, sand, or dirt, it's giving us an appropriate throttle response. What that means is uh, the throttle response may not feel the same. You may not have the same amount of acceleration if you're driving in this mode, and that is normal. Now, the next setting, I'm going to click it up to the next one, a little too far, and you'll see, didn't want to go there. It says shift to L4. Uh, if you're in drive, it's actually going to give you better instru instructions. It's going to say stop the vehicle and shift the automatic transmission to neutral. So we're going to do that. Shift to L4. We're going to do that. And now it says loose rock is activated. The next one you can see here, it switches over. It's going to be mobile. And then the last one is rock. And that is, in a nutshell, how to use all the different uh, advanced traction control features in four-wheel drive, high and low. Uh, I know that was a lot of information all at once, and maybe some of it's still not too clear. So if you have any questions about any of those systems, feel free to shoot me a quick message below. Uh, if I need to clarify something or, or add you know, a further explanation, I'm more than happy to do that for you. If you found that you've been in specific situations that call for something slightly different, feel free to comment below we'll, uh, as well. We'll just turn this into a regular discussion. Uh, what I did was just the very basics of some situations where you would use certain features. Uh, if you have any questions about any other features or if there's something slightly different in your forerunner, like for example, you have the Limited, that's a full-time four-wheel drive. If you have any questions about how this applies to the different uh, trim levels and the different features and different forerunners, just let me know. Uh, same thing, you know, a lot of these features are in the, the Tacoma and the FJ Cruiser. If you have questions about any of those things, just give me a quick message and you know I have enough vehicles laying around the dealership and between my FJ that I, I own personally that I'll be able to shoot another quick little video for you. Uh, like always, if you have any questions about any other cars or any other how-to tutorials that you want made, just send me a message and maybe I'll do a video just for you next. Have a good day.